Hi guys and welcome back to the channel. Today I've got the tank review for the brand new Warhammer 40k Era 2 independent medium tank, the Ignis Pagatio, which is basically a bat chat with 80 GMs that are barrel fired and a 20 round auto loader. What do I think of this tank? I think looking at some of its stats, you could mistake it for not being that good a tank because you look at the penetration for example and the penetration is awful. If I'm honest, 280 standard pen and 360, three is it, on the premium, is not realistically good enough for an era 2 medium tank. But you can make it work. There's just certain tanks that you become completely pointless against, like 4211s, for example, where you just sit there going, I, I can't do anything about this guy. Plus, the gun can be a little bit derpy, but on the whole, I've really enjoyed playing this tank. I really have. It's an assassino tank, because it's an assassin tank. Basically, what you do with it is you single out tanks, get in there, assassinate them, bug out. Try and avoid packs with it, and you will have a good time. Because when you do get that one tank that is singled out and alone, oh boy, do you absolutely trash the poor thing. I mean, with 4211s, you can take them out. But if there's more than one of them, that's where it becomes a problem. Because, obviously, you can just go hug their ass, launch an ATTM into it, and then just unload the clip into their ass. But like I say, the problem is, if there's a bunch of them together yeah it's not a struggle you want to avoid the packs of tanks that roam around because it's not going to go too well for you this is that ultra assassin tank that you run in find one tank single him out and just go ha good night sweet prince and eliminate them pretty much also wait for the discounts that will come with the sisters of is it sisters of battle that will come whenever we hit the targets. Wait for the discounts to pick up this tank because that's when it becomes far more worth it. And the tank, I think you can get 50% off on this or 30% off. It'll be like 7 or 8k, which is far more worth it for an era 2 medium tank, which will make you a good amount of credits. So, let's have a look at the stats of the Ignis Pagatio. We have or Pagatio, Pagatio. We'll, we'll go, we'll, it'll interchange as we go along. You've got 940 horsepower. With a 65 km an hour top speed and a 23 km an hour reverse speed. Now in Cold War, for this tank, you want to make this quicker. So naturally, you're probably going to run something like the traction system to be able to get this tank up to 71 km an hour. Because speed will be your friend. Being able to get in, assassinate, get out, right? Speed will be your friend. You've got a 34.56 horsepower per ton ratio, which will help you hit this 65 km an hour top speed really easily. The ground resistances do not hinder this tank whatsoever. Which is definitely nice. But, so, yeah. So you don't have to really... You know, the mobility on this tank is really, really good, essentially. You've got 2,500 hit points, which is a nice amount of hit points to use to get in to assassinate things. You tend to be able to take one hit, get in, and destroy. And then try and evade the gun of the tank looking at you. Sometimes you might have to take two hits, but it is what it is. Just try and assassinate where you can. Try and throw the ATGMs about where you can and get the shots out and damage as much as you, you know as much as you possibly humanly possible in terms of your camo you've got 343 meters of steel concealment we can get this down pretty damn low with smoke and a camo net which will help you get in and assassinate people because you won't get spotted as you close in and then you'll get spotted when it's too late which is perfect for the assassin tanks in era 2 so that's okay especially with the stuff you can knock it down with you've got 505 meters view range which is all right for an era two tank although view range isn't as important in, in cold war really you've got 36 degrees a second traverse on the turret which you've got to bear in mind with the hull doesn't keep up with it so yeah just bear in mind that this turret doesn't keep up with the hull so when you're circling someone you've got to have the gun pointing the same way as you're driving because it won't keep up and yeah you, you'll have some missed shots sometimes when the turret traverse just doesn't keep up with the tracks when you're trying to pull a maneuver so be wary of that You've got 1.13 meters of accuracy during rotation, which isn't the best, which is why you'll be running something like vert stabs to make it better and get that number down. You've got 6 degrees of gun depression with 11 degrees of elevation. It's proper French oscillating turret problems. 6 degrees of gun depression isn't the best, but at the same time, most of the time when you're using this gun, you're going to be assassinating someone, so you're going to be all in. So the gun depression doesn't struggle as much, although it does matter when you're trying to launch an ATGM at someone. So it can be a little bit awkward on the ridge line for that. Also, like I said, the 11 degrees of gun depression is a oscillating turret problem. 
So you've got a 37 second reload for this clip, which has 20 shots. You've got a 0.35 accuracy, which isn't the best, but again, you can knock it down with all the gun perks. You've got 1.7 aim time, which is absolutely fantastic. Gets the gun in aimed perfectly fine. Fifth, a 0.5, a 0.5 second intra clip. See, less than a second intra clip. This thing spits the rounds out so fast that you absolutely trash something if you are close in. But like I say, the gun with the .35 and the way that the tank fires, it's really weird. It's almost like it recoils so that the gun bounces almost on the tank. So it's, it's never quite aimed in all the time at distance. So this is one that you have to fire one and then wait. And you can't really keep firing with that intra clip unless you're right next to someone. You've got APDS on the standard round, APFSDS on the premium, and HE on the third type of shell. You are never going to take these HE rounds. They are, for 100mm of pen, they are pretty much nev not useful because you will struggle to pen anything with this. And most of the tanks you will fire at will be mostly dead before you even get to fire this shell. And 37 second reload on this clip is pretty long. There is a pretty big downtime with this tank that you do have to be careful of. Because if you fire this and the ATGM, then you will be out of the game for like quite a bit, essentially. So what I always what I always do with it is if I'm going to assassinate, I will launch the ATGM at someone, pen them, and then I'll get going with the autoloader. And if you do that, you tend to have about about 10 or 15 second downtime once you've done that and got past someone. So you do have to be wary that there is a bit of a downtime with this tank with the reload, which some of the games in Era 2 can go pretty damn quick, so sometimes they can escape you. But if it was any quicker, would this tank be then a bit OP? Probably. Because you wouldn't be able to do anything against it. It just reload way too quickly. I think this is a pretty well-balanced tank, to be honest. The only, da the, the only true downside to the tank, and the only thing that lets it down, is the penetration. At 280 on the standard round, with 360 on the premium. Realistically, 360 is the minimum standard pen that you want in Era 2. Because that helps you pen most tanks, and it helps you actually just about pen the weak spots of some of the ridiculous tanks, like the 4211. 280 will not do you very good at all. You'll have to get the sides of people. You will have to get the rears to use this standard round. Basically, that's what you have to do. Even if you get the sides of the 4211, that's 280 is not going to work. 360 might, but it is what it is. So it's one of those tanks that you might take more premium rounds than standard. But for me personally, I'll take more standard than premium because standard works well enough against the sides and rears of pretty much every tank except for the 4211. But then you can load premium if you know you're going to get against the 4211, for example. You got 1280 max speed on the standard ammo, 1430 on the premium, which means the premium round is flat out better than the standard round, which is another reason that you might see these tanks just firing full gold. So be wary of that, that you'll have to leave the shots just a little bit better with the standard round than you will with the premium round. It's just a thing. And yes, this has a missile launcher. So as you can see, it's got 29 second reload on the missiles with a 0.4 accuracy and a 0.4. I don't, I, this doesn't really matter for ATGM, so I'm not sure why this is here, but okay. So yeah, 29 second reload with 600 millimeters of pen on the ATGM for 700 damage and 365 max speed on the ATGM, which is on the fast side, I believe, for ATGMs. So that's all right. 700 damage is pretty low for ATGMs in Era 2. There's quite a few of them are doing like, what, 900,000? This is actually on a similar level to the... T62M1, right? That has about 700 damage on its ATGM. It's pretty similar on that level. 29 second reload is quite long, though, for this ATGM. Again, for the ATGM, it's a little bit weak. 700 alpha is a little bit low, and 29 seconds is a little bit slow. If this was more like 25 seconds, it'd probably be better off, but it is what it is. You do get a nice slab of them, though. You get 10, which is lovely, because that's, you know, 7k damage in terms of just the ATGMs, which is wonderful because you don't ever really run out of them and you can you know, slam them in, slam them in where you want to. You also get 150% silver bonus and a 125% commander XP bonus. So you get a good slab of XP for your crew commanders and you also make good silver with this tank. So let's get on to the equipment and the crew. In terms of equipment on this tank, I run camo net vertical stabilizers, and the traction system. 
I run the traction system because I want to go at 71 kilometers an hour. I also want to make my track traverse 10% better, which is something I really want for trying to out traverse people. I run the vert stabs because this gun is troll. And again, most of the time when I'm using this gun, I am on the move. I am assassinating. So I want my accuracy during movement and turret rotation to be 20% better. And it's something that I just want to get better in general. And again, the camo net because it helps my tank to assassinate, essentially, with not getting spotted when you're closing in on someone until the last second, right? That's what helps with assassins. They're not seen until the last second. I also run smoke, again, so that once I've assassinated, I can pop smoke if I need to get out of there and make it more difficult for them to hit me, or just generally because it actually knocks the camo down on this tank by 20%. So as you can see, it's knocked us down to 245 meters of still concealment, which is nice. And in terms of a commander, I've put it in the M50 Sherman. So let's move it over to the Ignis. Slap it in this tank here. And as you can see on the Ignis, I run Born Leader, Rapid Reload, Sixth Sense, Dead Eye, Steady Aim, Run and Gun, Snapshot, Clutch Breaking, and Camo. So I run Dead Eye because Dead Eye is one of those perks that is good for tanks that fire a lot of shells in a row. Or big boomsticks. Big boomsticks because it makes their... You know, they've already got high module damage. Which means they've already got a high chance of ammo racking someone. You make it 6% more likely to do it. That's always a nice thing to do. So big boomsticks is something that you can run dead eye on. And have a bit of a meme with. And on auto cannon type tanks. Like a BMP. Like this. Like the 4AD. You know. Like the teeth breaker that's just come out as well. It puts a lot of shells into a tank in one go. So you're increasing the amount of damage that this shell can do by... Well, the amount of module damage this shell can do by 6% for every shell that hits the enemy tank, right? So you're more likely to damage people's engines, set them on fire, stuff like that. So it's a... You know, it, again, it's a placebo effect, right? Because you could think, well, I could be doing that already anyway without the dead eye. I don't know without with or without it, right? Could be placebo effect. I could be just thinking I'd do more fires and more engine damage and stuff like that with dead eye, but... I, you know, it's always a nice thing to think, oh, I've got 6% better module damage. That's why I'm running it. So that's why I run that perk. Clutch braking again, because I want to help the track traverse of the tank. I want the track traverse to be really good so I can out traverse people. The gun handling can be trolled, so I make my gun handling as good as humanly possible with steady aim, running gun, and snapshot. And like I say, camouflage expertise to make sure that my tank is as stealthy as it can be and helps me get in to assassinate people. Realistically... You could drop snapshot if you wanted to and put on silent driving. So you make your camo 50... Well, it decreases the effect of driving on your camo by 55%, which will make your still your driving concealment way, way better. That's something you could definitely run as well. And that will help you be an assassin even more. Down to you, down to your playstyle if you want whatever you want. Same as running rapid aim. You could run rapid aim on because the turret traverse is slower than the track traverse. And again, we've made it even better with clutch braking and with the traction system, so you can run rapid aim for that. It's all down to you. The goodness is in the eye of the beholder in terms of a crew, and it's down to how it suits you in terms of your playstyle. They're just my recommendations of a scrub. So let's have a look at the stats of the Pagatio fully pimped out. So as you can see on this tank, we've got up to 71.5 kilometers an hour. The reverse speed's gone up to 25 as well. The hull rotation is now at 45 degrees a second. We've got some better ground resistances. 226 meters of seal concealment on the tank now. You can knock this down to about, I think it was 240 with silent driving. So that might be way worth having silent driving on over snapshot. We'll see. I might change it as I go along. Who knows? The view range is up to 526. We've not really done too much to boost that. But again, you can see the targets. So you kind of want to get in close anyway with the Ignis. The turret rotation speed is up to 37.55, which is way slower than the whole rotation now. It was 2 degrees a second slower, now it's way slower. So that's just something to bear in mind. The 0.62 accuracy during turret rotation is now way better than the standard the standard accuracy on during rotation it was. It was like, what, 1.1, something like that? The accuracy is also down to 0.3, which is decent. We're down to a 31.5 second reload, which is quicker than the 39 seconds, but it's still a little bit slow, but... Again, it balances out the tank, really, for the damage it can put out when it actually hits its shells. The difference is actually hitting those shells, to be fair. Accuracy during movement is down to 2.58, which is way better, again, with having the vert stabs and the, the run and gun. I mean, we're down from, like, what, 
four. Was it 4.2 or something like that on the accuracy drone movements? So that's way better. 1.63 on the aim time. So it's just a little bit better on the aim time. And as you can see, it's moved it up to a 4.3, nearly 4.4 K DPM, which is crazy. But yeah, on the whole, I have thoroughly enjoyed playing this tank. I really have. I love the assassin gameplay. I, I really do like that assassin gameplay in general in Cold War. But I do like the assassin gameplay that this thing can pull off. It's pretty deadly when you get that lone tank to go against you just go oh hello friend ATGM then just you murder them with the gun it's an acquired taste I'd say probably for that playstyle because you sort of it, it takes a lot to get that out of it realistically because you have to recognize the situation where you go yes this I can do this to this guy as opposed to just seeing a tank going in YOLO in wrecking their day but then realizing you've run into about seven tanks and then they kill you very very quickly so it's probably a decent skill cap tank for that because you have to recognize the situations where you can be useful and where you can't be useful and relocate and stuff like that but i have thoroughly enjoyed it and for the if it gets to its discounted price at like seven or eight k gold something like that i'm not too sure don't quote me on that then it'll be well worth picking up i think to be honest and to be honest i, I think it looks pretty cool I, I like the the black on this skin to be honest i like the way it looks i do like the black tanks in general so just the way it looks i really like myself but anyway so, as always, everyone, I'm going to send you over to the replays where you can decide for yourself and look at the tank and see if you think it's for you or if it's not, essentially. So, I'll see you in the replays. So, here we are in the replays. There's going to be five of them for your faces, which is actually going to lead to a video that's pretty much the same in length as most of my other tank reviews. It's just that these games seem to be a little bit quicker. Five replays for your faces because I have really enjoyed playing this tank. I've had a great whale of a time doing it. And you're going to see that in some of these replays. You're going to see some of the more average games I've had in the tank, to be honest. And then some of the really good games I've had in this tank too. So we're on the first game. And this first game is one that I had on stream. So there's no end screen either because I forgot. I just pressed X at the end of the game. And it's a game that will end with an AFK tank. So basically you take the 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 final damage score and reduce it by the afk tanks score and that's probably what you'll get and that's it generally works out as the average game that i've really had in this tank to be honest until that afk point but anyway besides the point 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 we're on this map which is vineyards and on vineyards they have pushed to a position that I didn't expect them to stay unspotted for. These two T-55 Enigmas. And it's like, well, let me just launch this ATGM at you, sir, while I'm running. He ended up killing my gunner, which destroyed my turret traverse. But, fortunately enough, the shell still landed straight into the back end of that Enigma. And we hit him for 671. Now he's all alone because he's charged in. And it's like, well, don't mind if I do assassinate you then, Mr. Enigma. And we're just going to go to town on this guy. And there we go. We delete him. And in the first, like, 30 seconds of firing we have up to 2.3k damage just like that as i say when you start to assassinate someone and you get up behind someone like that the damage racks up so quickly just because of how fast that intra clip is now unfortunately we go for the atgm there on the wz122 but just as we did it he ended up moving forwards which meant that we ended up just hitting and destroying the building which is sad sad times well, we're just waiting to reload the gun. I was just trying to get out of the way of the medium tanks that are all coming in. And then WZ-122 actually nearly got me with a rocket while he was being circled by other people. Very close, but here's what it is. We're just trying to get some shots into this Enigma as we're going after him. We get some shots into his driver. We'll shut him down. Now we're going after the Type 80-2. But unfortunately, we were so perfect. So perfectly in sync with that other Ignis Pagatio That we actually couldn't lead the ATG. <laughs> No, we were just so in sync. That was my own fault, realistically. I should have stopped the moment that me and that Ignis got in sync with each other. But it, it is what it is. So we ended up missing that. But we got a few shots into him before he went down. Now there's this Conqueror out in the open. It's like, hello, Mr. Conqueror. My ATGMs love Conquerors. So we just launched the ATGM. Should be going in. Should be good times. And he just Neos it. Which is sad times. But we get the shots into that conqueror there and shut him down because we ended up setting him on fire you do have to be careful when firing this gun like i say at distance because it tends the, i don't know it's weird i think the, the tank recoils so therefore the aiming reticle act but well, because the aiming reticle is the gun it actually bounces 
so therefore the gun bounces way before the gun manages to or sorry should i say the reticle manages to reset to where you're actually aiming so you have to just take your time when you're firing at distance you'll see that in a bit again but yeah it can be a little bit awkward at distance but this is what you do to 4211s yep we la launched a big atgm up where the sun doesn't shine which gives us another seven or eight hundred damage on that guy which is nice i was actually swinging back round to get back behind him and hug him in the rear and start launching shells into him. But he ends up getting shut down. So now there's only four tanks on the enemy team left. There's this heavy tank that's in front of us here. The FV4211. And then there's the two medium tanks that are on the two line. We're looking at those guys thinking... I want to go for those guys, but we'll see if we can swing around to get the 4-2-1-1. But he ends up getting shut down. There's still a Magak 5 somewhere as well, and we have no idea where he is. So it's like, well, okay, I'm just going to go deal with the threat that we know is knocking about. And that is these two guys in the cap. And I also expect this Magak 5 to be probably up on the ledge at J2, which is why we're still coming towards this way. Because the gun is not very good at range, I'm actually trying my best to close the distance so that I can get this gun to be used you know, pretty effectively. Fortunately enough, we get a nice RBRT into that forad before he gets shut down. And now we are after the Magak 5. And it's like, hang on, where is this Magak 5? I'm, I'm sure he would have been up here, right? Because we were all in that corner at J9. He can't be up there. Surely, surely someone would have found him. But he's not showing any signs of being around here. So we're just going to clear corners. We're going to have a look to make sure he's not around this corner. We can't physically see him. And may I was thinking maybe he was tightly packed around that corner. But the other medium doesn't see him either. So it's like, okay, well, this is odd. Where is he? He's actually at K0 in his AFK. And the re So realistically, this is probably the average game that we've had, which is 5k damage. But we do find that guy. So we're going to launch an ATGM at him when we find him. There we go. We see him and he's like, he's not he's not FK, right? He's just looking around that corner to see if he can shoot someone. We launch the ATGM, pen him, put us up to 5.6k damage. It's like, oh no, this guy is AFK. And you can see what I'm talking about with this gun, right? You can see it right here. This is the demonstration. This is why I included this replay especially. When we fire, it recoils up. Which means that the gun is actually really inaccurate if you were just to hold the trigger down. But if you make sure you aim the shots, it's pretty decent. Unfortunately, when it comes to firing other tanks that are moving, it's going to be very difficult to do that. We ended up finishing that game with 7.5k damage, which was a nice total for the Ignis. But realistically, it was probably like 5.6k from that final ATGM and then just farming an AFK. So we're on to the second replay, and the second replay, there is some shenanigans goes on in this game. Yes, some shenanigans. This is probably the most fun game I've had in this tank. Doesn't matter that we may not, well, we, we pretty, get a pretty good score, but we may not get the best score in the game, but whew, there is some fun things happen here. So we're on Redshire, and... I'm just watching the cross. We see that RDFLT go across the open, which naturally I'm not going to fire an ATGM at him because we're not going to do too much. I was, I was trying to watch the cross to see if anything was crossing into the heavy tank flank. We do see this Magak 5, so we launch an ATGM. Really hopeful ATGM, to be perfectly honest, because we were never going to ever hit that guy. And yeah, you can see my little bit of frustration. There. I'm like, why did I fire that? That was stupid. That was my own error. I shouldn't have fired that shell, that ATGM, to be perfectly honest. But we're just waiting for the reload of the ATGM before we go in. We see this Ignis Pegatio. And you can hear it. That's why I paused. You can hear it. He's fired. He'd already fired his ATGM as well. So we launched the ATGM in. We come in. It's like, hello, Mr. Ignis. And goodbye. We pop the smoke so that we can basically stop from anything that I was expecting to rush over. And we get out of dodge. Assassination complete. Assassino. We get rid of the other Ignis, which is great, great times. And now there's this Stingray. So I'm like, you know what? Okay, we're going to go in on this Stingray too. Launch the ATGM at him because we are nearly loaded. It's like, well, let's ram him. Ram him, get another 400 damage off him. We are still reloading the main shell, so it's kind of awkward. But the RDFLT manages to shut down the Stingray for me. We get a little bit of tracking, which is nice. Another assassination attempt complete. We're up to 3.1k damage. Now there's the BMP2, and I'm thinking, hmm, I kind of want this BMP2. Or oh, this Stingray, hey? Oh, another Stingray? Why don't I? Actually, okay, Mr. BMP, you're more deadly because you have the ATGM. So we're making sure we're leading it. Unfortunately, it doesn't happen. But we go 
going with the main cannon because like I say this main cannon is so deadly if you get in close quarters he's trying to machine gun us we shut him down it's like hello Mr. Stingray give him a good ram and <laughs> shut him down too two light tanks down just like that the other ignis pagatio is coming in it's like oh good gravy you're making mistakes my friend uh, my other ignis pagatio on my team's going in to shut him down also the light tank which means it's not going to go too well for him and we yeah we didn't get a chance to get the atgm in then the other mauler is coming around now and it's hello it's like hello mr mauler oh the chieftain's popping over let's pop the atgm in. aim at the drive reel so that we can track and pen it because you never know as well with the chieftain that you might actually ammo rack it Fortunately enough, the Chieftain misses us, and we're, we're actually getting the assistance as a, for this as well from the medium that's back at K4, which is decent. We're up to 2.1k assistance with 6.6k damage and 3 kills, and we are loading our 5th missile to, well, 4th missile, yeah, 5th missile, to make sure that we can try and get some more damage on something we're going on. So it's like, well, hello, Mr. Leopard1A1, don't mind if I do. We pop over, auto-aim the shell, smash the ATGM in, because we're so close range it doesn't matter. And the 1A1's gone. We didn't quite get the kill on the Chieftain, but that's two more tanks assassinated just like that. We see the 30B24 ad, and it's like, okay, no, you know what? I'm going to pop the smoke so that guy can't machine gun me. And we're going after the Mauler. <laughs> Look at him go. We get to shut him down. And unfortunately for me, this 4 ad is coming after us, and he gets to machine gun us. That Mauler, though. <laughs> he pulled off the full slide. Oh dear. Memes. Lots of memes. We do finish the game though. We carried The team carried through to the victory. And we finished with 5 kills, 7.7k damage, 2.1k assisted. The first class, 1717 base XP. A nice game for the Ignis Pagatio, which was a really ridiculous, fun game. That. Like, to be honest, I died to that 30b24 ad, right? He machine gunned me, which is also a tank that you don't want to go in on, because the 4 ad will wreck you just as quick as you'll wreck him. And... I didn't care that I died. I just didn't care because watching that mauler just glide along in front of me on one track was hilarious. <laughs> and, you know, just, uh, oh, just laugh. I was laughing so hard at that point. I was cackling like a little girl. Anyway, so we're on to the third replay and we are on Kaunas. And on Kaunas, we're going to go to this little position over here on the corner at C6 so that we can well catch out anything that possibly drives across the zero line, see if we can see it. You know, um, maybe anything that does like to go to that little spot there where I'm looking, we could A to GM it or machine gun it. But the light tank's gone in very, very aggressively at D0. And I was thinking, mm, maybe I can go in and help him. But this Tyran 6 is in a very perilous position. So it's like, oh, well, okay, Mr. Tyran. Don't mind if I do. We launched the ATGM at him for 708. And the... What, the, those shots were really, really funky. This is what I mean by the gun, right? Those first three shots were really funky the way they came out of the gun. Because I wasn't really aiming that way. They just sort of hit the floor, even though the aim circle was on the tank. Really weird. But that's that's what I mean by this gun being odd with its recoil. It, there's just something funny about it. Can't quite put my finger on it, but you know, you know what it is, what it is. It's a very, very close range tank you want to be assassinating. It is the assassination tank. You want to be up close and personal with people. Like I say, people that get isolated and very lonely, they're the ones that you want to go after. Like this Leopard 1A1 in front of us. It's like, well, hello, Mr. Leopard 1A1. We launch the ATGM, get a shot into him, and then we start machine gunning him. And for the 400, 500 hit points he took off us, we took like 1,500 off him, which is the trade. It's the assassin trade, that's what I'm going to call it. It's like, hello, Mr. Scorpion. How is life? Well, don't mind if you just stop, stop here for a little while, you know? And we get to shut him down. Assassination complete. It's the assassin. It's just what it does. And especially stuff like that light tank where... You know, you can just stop them in their tracks. And because you are a 25-ton tank, and light tanks like that are pretty light in general, like, as in the name, you will do quite a bit of ramming damage. And then naturally, you can then just unload on them while you've got them pinned in front of you. So now we've got the opportunity to get in behind this 4211. It's like, hello, Mr. 4211. We're just going to get around your side, try and get some shots in. But unfortunately, we couldn't cuddle that ghost. And... I just wanted to cuddle the ghost. That's all I wanted to do. And we could have shut down the 4211. Great name, by the way. So we are now going after the tanks that have pushed across the one line. So this T62M1 pushes across the open. It's like, well, okay, if he's going to drive out, let's 
blap him with an ATGM. I know I'm going to take the hit. We get a few shots in, and it's like, oh god, no, that's not the that's not the play. That is not the one. We pop smoke to make sure that they can't see us anymore, and we repair our gun and get out of dodge. Now we're coming up behind the two guys in the town, because there's still two guys left. They are pushing aggressively towards our cap. But me alone, again, this tank doesn't do packs. Doesn't do very well against packs whatsoever. It wants to get those isolated tanks. We managed to get the ATGM into the TR-580, and then we auto-load his face. Now the Centurion 9 comes out, so we just drop the shells into this guy, and then we pop the reload and wait for the ATGM to come in before we go back round. Now this is where we make a mistake, because... I don't recognise... I thought at this point they're going to be capping. I don't recognise the fact that these guys actually are coming back. So we get the ATGM into the Centurion 9. But unfortunately we then run headfirst straight into the tanks... The enemy tanks that are on rushing in to save the day. And unfortunately we ended up losing that game of fish for 3 kills. 7.2k damage. 828 base XP on a loss. Which is a sad time. That's where the mistake is. That's where you've got to have the realisation, right? Because I made the mistake of pushing after that Centurion 9 because I thought he was all, all alone and all isolated and I could absolutely trash him. But unfortunately, he wasn't alone and we died very, very quickly. Which is, again, that's where you've got to have the that little bit of nous. You've got to have that little bit of know-how to elevate your position in a fight. And know that, like I say, if someone is isolated, you can really wreck their day very quickly. But if they start to become one, two, maybe three of them together, it's not going to go too well for you. And you really have to isolate those targets. Because it is not a, a tank. It's not a brawler. It's not a tank that's a brawler in that sense of getting stuck into a pack of tanks. So we're on to the 4-3 replay. And the 4-3 replay, we are on this map, which is Chabang. And we are in the middle of the open, which is a bit of an awkward position. We're trying to get some shots at this T92, but unfortunately, this gun at distance is not that great. We do manage to get one in, though, for 152. And I pop the reload, even though I've still got quite a few rounds in. I'm th thinking, okay, you know what? I want to be fully loaded for when I get stuck into a fight. So we move ourselves into a position to shoot the guys... That possibly go across the K line. This forad pops over, so we pop a shot into the forad's hull with the ATGM. Pop the smoke, so it's more difficult for him to again shoot us there. It keeps us safe from him for a little bit. He starts coming in. We're auto aiming, waiting for this reload to come in. He ends up ramming us, and it's like, are we still auto aimed right next to him? So we get a couple of shots in. He is completely lost at this point. This is where smoke's helped us. The dead eye kicking in, setting that guy on fire. And we managed to shut that guy down. Now we've got the ATGM and we're going to launch it at this Leopard 1. Which get a nice 748 roll on him. And for our 500 hit points that were sacrificed on that, that 4 ad, we're up to 3.2k damage. Which is a good trade. We'll take it. There's one tank out. One tank with half its health left. And I'm thinking, right, okay, what can I do now? Again, I don't want to go in front of tanks. I don't want to follow where my team is currently because I want to go against isolated vehicles. I'm thinking possibly of going after this forad over here because he, again, is very, very alone, and that's very scary for him. I'm thinking I could either go behind the tanks that my guys are facing at J23, or I could just go after this forad and absolutely meme his ass. And that's exactly what we're going to do. We're going to go meme his ass because he, again, the assassino is... This Ignis Pagatio, and that is what we are going to do. So I'm thinking, is he still around this corner? There he is. Hello, Mr. Forad. 80 GM to the ass, and here we go. Unload, sets him on fire, and good night, sweet prince. And we shut that guy down. I said, again, when you get the drop on people, this tank is so deadly. Don't drive off the bridge, you moron. Oh, thank God we didn't drive off that bridge. I thought I was going to end in tears for a second. We're just trying to aim for some shots into this Chief, which we get two in. We end up damaging the Amarak as well. But we pop the reload, because I want to make sure that, again, I've got the shells in ready to face the next target. I was thinking this Chieftain's possibly going to turn around to face me. I've got all the hit points, so you know what? I'm just going to launch an ATGM at him and maybe get some damage. And it, but they are actually driving away. Managed to get the shot straight into the ass, and we've got 10 seconds left to get this reloading this is where i'm saying we've got that bit of downtime because i fired the atgm after we've got the the clip out and now we're kind of like in that sort of down period where i can't really do much but fortunately enough we get reloaded the first one misses by a mile but we get to shut down the chief derm now there's only two tanks left there's a medium tank at h5 and this t72 av who is sat 
right there. We launched the ATGM at them. They haven't realized we're here. We pen them for 600, which is fine. And this is, again, where the gun lets you down at this sort of distance, especially against a tank like that, where we have... don't The AV, we don't have the pen, realistically, for 280 with 280 pen to go through him reliably. And the gun just decided, no, nah, I didn't want to hit any of those. And as you can see, that's where the I hadn't quite adjusted to the fact that this tank recoils. We do manage to get the ATGM in though, so we're going to launch the ATGM at this AV, but just as the, sh the, the shell's flying in, he gets shut down. And we finished the game with a really nice total for the Ignis. We finished with the victory, three kills, 8,000 damage. A lot of credits, 283,000 credits, by the way. 16... 16 base XP, which is, again, a really nice game for the Ignis Pagatio. Showed off what it can do really well. Again, you just have to assassinate. You have to get those isolated targets out of the game while they are isolated. And this tank does it phenomenally. The penetration, like I say, can let it down against tanks like that T-72 AV or the 4211, which is where you have to maneuver yourself into a position to get after them. But naturally, that doesn't happen. Or it's not as easy to do that. As often, especially because techs like the AV and the 4211, if they have backup, you're just you have to get to that one spot to pen them. Whereas they don't have to get to that one spot to pen you. So if they manage to maneuver it where they can keep their ass free of you, yeah, it's not going to go too well for you, and it does become a bit of a struggle. But like I say, as you can see, I've made it work, and it let's say it can be pretty damn fun to just run around like a lunatic assassinating people so we're on the final replay well done if you've made it this far and we are on heilbronn we're playing ring around the roses with this bmp and i know this is a dangerous dangerous game because naturally he's got good atgms and a good machine gun but fortunately enough he ends up missing his atgm and less than one minute into the game we're up to 2.4k damage because we assassinated the four ads now coming in so we're just going to auto aim the shells that this guy's will run away pop the smoke so that it's difficult for him to maneuver the shots at us with his machine gun because again his machine gun will get rid of our health very very quickly but with a few shots into him managed to get up to 2.8k damage with only taking like 100 damage ourselves which is decent and we are just waiting on our reload we do have the atgm in ready to go if we need to and this m60a2 is the perfect candidate we managed to slap the shot into his back end for 711. And now we are running away because they seem to be pushing this area a little bit aggressively. And again, frontally facing tanks are not the Ignis Pegasio's strength. It doesn't want to be doing that too much. So you can see here, I'm thinking, what do I do? Do I go off? This Ignis Pegasio here is running in. And do I want to try and assassinate from the back? So I'm going to leave that Ignis alone. Because that Ignis is doing his own thing. He's running up the three line. He's not bothering me at this point. And I want to get these two mediums from attacking my guys E8. And move my team on. So we slap the shell into the leopard there. Which gets rid of a bit of his health. But the forad actually turns around on the sixpence really quickly to get after me. And again, I don't want to sit in front of a forad. Because that would be very, very bad for my health. But for, I'm, I'm happy that we got that shell in to get a load of the hit points off of that leopard. So we start pumping shots at the at the Ignis in the distance, which we're just trying to still get some shots into. But the leopard one pops up and shoots us, and the forad is still coming. So I'm not dealing with that. I'm not going to sit here and take that shot. So we run away while we reload. We pop the ATGM at this FV4211. I don't really know what I was thinking with that shot because it was never going to do any damage against that guy unless we hit the drive wheel or landed it on his engine deck, which is why I was aiming that little bit higher on that 4211, but it, it didn't go anywhere near. Now we're nearly loaded. We are going to go after these tanks in front of us. So the M60A2 fires. And I'm thinking, I kind of want to get rid of that guy. Now the four ads come in. It's like, well, okay, let me clip you but unfortunately the shells were just derping into the floor there again with the recoil but we get rid of him that's that guy gone now there's the m60a2 we launched the atgm at the m60a2 get rid of him now there's the leopard one we're chasing it's like well hello mr leopard one just come here come here come here we want to get the shells in thank you we get the turret rotation round. like i said the turret rotation is slow and then while we were finishing our clip into that leopard. We were also maneuvering ourselves to run away from him too. Now we're going back round. I'm thinking, do I want to ATGM and waste the ATGM on this guy? I'm thinking, no, not really. And fortunately enough, I don't have to waste the shell on that guy. He gets shut down. We're up to 8.4k damage with a thousand assistance. There's an M68 2 in front of us. This also this Magak. And it's like, well, hello, Mr. Magak. I don't want to waste my ATGM on that Magak again. Because it's just a waste. But 
we do get the chance to get the shot off onto the M60 A2, but unfortunately the forehand just ends up knocking us out of the way as we're aiming it. Not that it mattered because the M60 A2 actually got back behind cover. We get one shot into that M60 A2, but, but I'm being very careful because he can pen us with HE, and that will not go very, very well for us. The Leopard 1A1 ends up shooting us in the side, which is kind of annoying, and I'm annoyed at him now, so it's like, well, you, my friend, are alone. I want you. But we get the ATGM in, and this 1A5 is actually coming after my friend, so we pop the ATGM straight into the 1A5 for 679 and leave our forehand to it. Because we're not going to be reloading time to kill him. The forehand should kill him. And we can get round to assassinate this 1A1 that shot us in the side that I was very annoyed at for shooting me. So, we're going to come around on this guy. Now the ATGM's in. It's like, hello, Mr. Leopard 1A1. Unfortunately, we miss. But, realistically, it doesn't matter. Because at this range, we can absolutely shred the 1A1 with our tank. And we managed to shut that guy down. Finishing off the game for a really nice victory. Four kills, 10,171 damage, 1,000 assistance. The first class again for 1,762 base XP. A really great game for the Ignis Pagatio. It's always nice to break 10k in era 2. And we made an absolute butt ton of credits doing it because this tank does make so much silver, which is lovely. Which is why I always say if, if you're going to wait for the discounts, this is probably one that you want to pick up if you like Cold War in that way. But as always, everybody, thank you very much for watching. Well done if you'd stayed on this long. I'll see you next time.